This is the third and the final tutorial from the series of Microsoft Outlook video tutorials. The objective of these Outlook video tutorials is to give you the ability to use Outlook at its optimal level such that you can become more effective and productive at work. This video also explores features in Microsoft's popular email and calendaring program that make the job faster and easier to manage. It explains how to effectively catch up on important emails. This video highlights calendar features and talks about how to organize emails. We have already gained in-depth understanding on the key features such as managing spam, quick parts, finding contacts, mailing business cards, and so on. Now let's learn how to work with calendars, voting buttons, and color coding messages. Let's say you're receiving about 100 to 50 emails on a daily basis, and you would like to somehow segregate those mails through formatting just to be able to identify quickly each email by the subject or by the user and other such details so that you don't have to go and read each email. Once you just look through your inbox, you can quickly identify, oh, this is in this color in this format. It must be around this particular subject. So let's see how we can do that. Under the View tab, under Current View, click on View Settings. Another dialog box would open. In that, on left-hand side, click on Conditional Formatting. Once you do that, click on Add. Just input any name for a particular type of messages that are going to be formatted. Then change the font size as you like it. Let's just make it really visible, so I'm going to use show card gothic. You can also choose a color and you can also change the font size so on and so forth and then click OK and then go ahead and click on condition. In that let's say I want to be able to format all the messages received from user 2. So I'm going to click on that name until it appears in, next to from and I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to click OK again, and then again, and finally OK. So, so now if you go to your messages, you can clearly see these messages have been received from user 2. And if you go to sent items, that's not the case. That is because we had applied this particular formatting only to our inbox folder. If you would like to apply it to sent items folder, then you need to follow the same steps, which is view settings, conditional formatting, add, and then change the font size, the color, type, specify the condition, then click OK, 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 and then OK. So now if you go to send folders, now you'll see all of these messages have been sent by user 2. Therefore, they are in green color and the font size is show card. So this is how you can color code your messages and quickly search through various emails based on multiple conditions. So this color coding process is like integrating conditional formatting in Microsoft Outlook. If it wasn't for voting buttons in Outlook, voting and tabulating those results of the vote could be a cumbersome task. This voting button feature automatically tabulates the response, calculating the number of responses per option. In order to send this mail, we need to compose a mail, then click on Use Voting Buttons under the Options tab. There are three built-in options and a custom option. We can choose the one based on our need. Once the responses are received, a tracking mechanism will appear in the original sent mail, 
which will aggregate responses. This wording feature works on older version of Outlook and it also works outside the organization. However, it works only in Outlook and the responses will be aggregated only when the voted message has been marked as read by the user. This feature has made the Outlook user more effective and productive. So let's see how we can create a voting email. Go ahead and open a new email. Then go to the Options tab and under Tracking click on Use Voting Buttons. There are three options here. I'm going to click on the second one, Yes and No. You can choose any you like. Then I also want to be able to select Request a Delivery Receipt and Request a Read Receipt. The second option will tell me whether the user has actually read my email or not. And the first option is basically telling me that I have sent this email to the user. Then in the To tab, I can just simply send this email to various users. I can type in the subject and in the body of the email, I can type in the message please vote and then I can just click on send and it will go so once I receive the message and when I try to open the message it's going to ask me do you want to send a read receipt to the user and I'm going to click yes and now the message has opened so I can click on vote and let's just say if I say yes another dialog box will open and it'll say you have chosen to respond yes do you want to send the response now and I'm going to click OK and I'm going to close this message so now I'm going to go to my original sent mail I'm going to open that and under the message tab under show I'm going to click on tracking once I do that it is going to list out the names of all the people who have received this email, they have read it, and what is their response. So this is how quickly you can tabulate your votes and how you can efficiently send these email out and be more productive at your workplace. Outlook Calendar has holiday calendar bifurcated by country. User needs to go to the File menu, select Options, then Calendar, and click on Add Holidays. Add Holidays to Calendar window pops up with list of countries. User can choose multiple countries. For example, if you would like to know all the holidays in India and the U.S., you need to check India and the U.S. Outlook automatically adds holidays to these countries in the calendar. You can also create events in Outlook so that you can remember them. For instance, if you would like to add your friends and family birthday or marketing campaigns or kickoff dates of certain presentations, you can set these as events in Outlook. These events can be saved as recurrences for infinite period. So let's see how we can set events and holidays and specific country holidays in Outlook. Go to the File tab under Options. On the left hand side, click on Calendar and under Calendar Options, click on Add Holidays. Once you do that, you can select the name of the country for which you would like to add holidays. So let's say I'm going to click on Turkey as I have added other countries in my calendar already and now I'm going to click OK and it's going to ask me do I want to install holidays for the US again I'm going to click now and now I'm going to click OK again and notice it has added holidays to my calendar for multiple countries so I've got Thailand here US here US and then I've got Turkey on May 19 so this is how easily you can add holidays to your calendar 
and if you would like to create an event go to the home tab after clicking on calendar then click on new appointment once you do that you can just type in the subject the location of the campaign or if it's someone's birthday it could be an entire day event or if it's just for a couple of hours you can change the time as well you change the date from here and if it's a recurring event then just click on recurrence and if you would like to share this event with somebody under attendees click on invite attendees and just just type in the email address of the person so this is how you can save an event in your calendar now let's look at group scheduling if you're having trouble tracking your employees co-workers or managers the calendar group feature under the home tab can help solve this problem. You simply need to select those contacts under the create new calendar group whose calendar needs to be viewed. There are three preconditions to this. Everyone in the group is part of the same exchange server group. Everyone in the group has the free busy schedule which can be viewed and everyone in the group is using a calendar. So now let's take a look at an example to understand group scheduling. Go to the calendar tab which is available at the bottom left hand corner. Click on that. Once you do that, this view would appear. Now go to the home tab and under manage calendars, go ahead and click on calendar groups. Once you do that, click on create new calendar group. Another window would pop up and it will ask you to type a name for the new calendar group. So let's say I'm going to type in testing and I'm going to click OK. The next window would ask you to select the name of the employees that are to be added in this calendar group. So I'm going to select the employees and I'm going to click OK. Once I do that, notice what has happened. Three calendars have appeared. Now let's say I want to get rid of the normal calendar and I just want to view the calendars of the employees which I had selected under the group testing. So on the left hand side there's something called calendar and under that you'll see various options. Notice I have a testing group here and under that I have two employees. And under my calendars, I already have two more calendars. So I'm going to uncheck the box here so that only two calendars are available. So you can see I have two calendars available here. Now let's say I would like to delete certain calendar groups. So what I can do is I can right click on testing. And once you do that, you can click on delete group. and It'll ask you whether you want to actually remove this calendar group. Say yes and notice it has removed those two calendars. Now let's say you would like to change the color of the calendars. So go ahead and right click on the name of the employee and then there's something called color. So from here you can change the color of the calendar. I've clicked on blue so this calendar has turned to blue. You can also choose to delete certain calendars from the group you simply need to right click on the name of the employee in that calendar group and just click on delete and it will delete the calendar of that employee from the group instead of deleting the entire group you can also move up and down the calendars you might feel that certain calendars are more important than the other ones you can move them up. You can also hide calendars. So these are the various options available under calendar group. This video was brought to you by CXO Learning Academy, a premier learning initiative by CXO Math. For any queries, you can email us at learning at cxomath.com. Thank you.